Next one, senior management accountability phase. So you've got your managers in place. What most people do when they have their managers in place is they have managers in place, but what do they do? Do they just allow their managers to manage? What's the mistake most people make when they have managers in place? Not managing the managers, Not managing the managers but still managing the staff. staff. So you've got managers in place, but you're going round the managers and managing the staff because either the manager isn't effective, isn't doing what they should be doing, or you're not letting the manager be effective and do what they need to be doing. So it's a training issue of you and them. How does the manager feel if you go round them and manage the staff? Yes. Undermined. undermined, massively undermined. And how do you feel? Well, I'm bloody paying them 40 grand a year and I'm frigging doing it myself. It's a right pain in the backside. It's not good, is it? Would you agree, guys? So here it's about accountability of the managers. This is where you stop the scenario where the manager blames the staff and you sit there and blame the staff too. The only person that isn't taking responsibility for anything there is the manager. And I've seen this so many times where it's the manager not taking responsibility because you're not making the manager accountable. If your manager runs the new business department and their job is to make sure the staff generate 30 instructions and let 30 properties every month, if that team doesn't do it, who's responsible? The manager. As a manager, by definition, your job is to get the team performing. Yes or no, guys? It's not the staff's fault. It's now the manager's fault. There was a really great example, actually, about... Um, two uh, boat race teams and the one manager was saying my team's crap they're useless they don't know what they're doing and I keep he kept he kept losing because he said his team was crap and then his other boat kept winning all the time and he was like you know my team were brilliant we've got great whatever and what they actually did is they swapped the two managers of the boat what do you call them the helmsman is that the right word I don't know what the word is but they, they changed cox. cox that's thank you the coxes of the boats over guess who won the next time the one team it wasn't the team, it was the management. And so if your team aren't performing, what is the manager doing to make them perform? It's amazing the difference between a good manager and bad manager. So here it's talking about actually getting your managers accountable, delegation to the managers and allowing them to do their job, higher team development, really making sure that you've, you've actually almost got to create a community out of your managers. So if you've got three managers, you and the three managers, you become a team, you become a senior management team. So you create an old community, you create an environment where you're getting together and you together are going to be helping to build this business. So start looking at how you can bring your managers together and make them more accountable. You need to be looking at training and development for them. On what? Not just lettings, what else? Management. Management. It's a whole new skill set in itself, isn't it? It's a massive skill set. How can you get them to manage the business for you as you want it managed when you're there or when you're not there? So that's 500, 1200. By the time you get into more 1200, you should be a pretty organized business by this point. You should be looking at departmental managers. You're probably looking at having like team leaders underneath those. Um, you're probably going to have even like an operations manager perhaps sitting above them. Then you really need to start letting go. By 1200, you should have a good sized business.